Hello and welcome to Universe Mode. This is Friday Night Smackdown. We are just two nights away from the Battleground pay-per-view. And that is going to be a huge one. That is going to be another great pay-per-view for the Smackdown brand. But here tonight we have another huge night of action for you. With two, once more, potential main events going at it on Smackdown. And there's the first one you see right there. A rematch from some time ago, a few months ago, between two incredible athletes. CM Punk and Kenny Omega will go one-on-one -on -one with each other just two days before their huge matches at Battleground. Kenny Omega, of course, set to defend the Intercontinental Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. CM Punk set to go one-on-one -on -one with the Beast Brock Lesnar. But before that, the two old rivals will meet once more in what promises to be another incredible bout between those two men to kick things off here on SmackDown but the main event is what everyone was talking about last week the main event is the key thing to pay attention to the beast against the champion Brock Lesnar decimated Kyle O'Reilly at the start of SmackDown last week well here tonight at the end of it in the main event he will go one-on-one -on -one, non-title against the WWE champion and it'll be interesting to see how both these men are able to shape up heading into battleground and what Kyle O'Reilly will do in that matchup. But speaking of Kyle O'Reilly and speaking of the WWE Champion, he's going to start things off tonight by having a few, th a few things to say, maybe in regards to last week and maybe the condition of Kevin Owens as well. So without further ado, let's get to O'Reilly. Well, here he is. He seems to be pretty good after uh, last week. Kyle O'Reilly seems to have bounced back from what... Brock Lesnar did to him, O'Reilly of course in case you didn't see, came to the aid of uh, his number one contender Kevin Owens and for his troubles had a trip to Suplex City and ate an F5 to go along with it but O'Reilly here tonight looks to be in a pretty uh, upbeat mood as Battleground rolls around and that's exactly what O'Reilly gets to to start things off. Talking about how great it is to be the representative of SmackDown. How much he still honors the right to be WWE Champion. And how excited he is for Battleground. But he knows that in amongst all of it there is a darker tale almost that O'Reilly has to discuss. And that darker tale involves his number one contender Kevin Owens. He knows Owens isn't here tonight and his condition heading into Battleground is worrying as well. And O'Reilly hates that. He hates that someone like Brock Lesnar had to take matters into his own hands and screw out the SmackDown brand of an incredible main event. And O'Reilly says he will not stand for that. And there's O'Reilly now with a few final things to say. He wishes o Owens a good recovery. He wishes him well. But know that when Battleground rolls around, whether he's 100% or not, O'Reilly is going to come flying out of the gates in an attempt to hold on to that WWE Championship. And as for Brock Lesnar, you, he'll get his just deserves tonight. You don't mess with SmackDown. You don't try and screw it over and think that the WWE Champion won't get involved in some way or another. Kyle O'Reilly's here to say he's here to be a champion of the people. And he's going to defend their honor against a man like Brock Lesnar. And speaking of Brock Lesnar, uh, we, we got to go to the back right now. Apparently, Brock Lesnar and Punk are having a brawl back there. Oh, my God. We go to the backstage and already a table's been broken in. Lesnar has stopped at nothing to destroy Punk here. Punk's already gone through a table. And he's just getting thrown around now into the door of this locker room. Time and time again, courtesy of the Beast, Brock Lesnar punishing Punk just two days before they're about to battleground. Punk was supposed to face Omega, and now he's just getting beaten around by the Beast. Brock Lesnar doesn't even seem to give a damn about his match against O'Reilly later. He doesn't seem to care about anything to do with the WWE Champion. He saw Punk, and the Beast wanted blood, and that's exactly what he's getting his hands on here tonight. Punk is helpless here in the hands of Brock Lesnar. We have not seen Punk been able to pull out anything here. Brock Lesnar, with the element of surprise, has flattened the best. And the Beast with an F5 through the table for CM Punk. Brock Lesnar. What is this man made of? And this, I don't know what to say about Brock that hasn't already been said. This man just doesn't care about anyone, anything. And he's proven that already. 
Kenny Omega will get them to go get them like off before Battleground. But CM Punk most certainly hasn't. Laid out through two tables, I can only assume. The Beast wants to have his way with Punk. Not only before O'Reilly, but before Battleground. This one, you know between these two, is deserving of a pay-per-view name as such. Because it is going to be a war zone when these two go to battle. Well, well, I guess Punk and Omega isn't happening. So we're going to move on to our next contest. And that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be... Um, a, a, a women's tag team matchup. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch against the team of Ivory and Winter. That, that's up next. All right, this one is, uh, I mean, it's still a little difficult right now to just to talk about anything, I guess. I was really just taken off guard by what we saw there. I was really looking forward to another entertaining opener on SmackDown and another entertaining matchup, another great matchup even between Punk and Omega, but Man, I am... Oh, God, as if it couldn't get any worse. Oh, I don't even get to finish my point because the women's champion and her tag partner for the night are here and they're out in full force. They're going after the boss while she's on her own. Winter isn't even facing Banks this Sunday. She's facing this woman. She's facing the last kick of Becky Lynch and Lynch is going to go right into her own time to come in and make the save here. Chasing them into the ring and having a way with Ivory to get things off with Winter though flattening the boss on the outside Lynch coming in to make the save but she's going to pay for it as well Banks coming to the save of Becky Lynch all sorts of kind of uh, outlandish things to happen here it's all over the place as we get things underway here with this matchup now the bell rings and we can start Banks and Ivory are going to be the, the two women to kick this one off I don't think it's gone any better on the outside. I think Winter and Becky are still brawling. The hatred between those two women showing on a, on a large scale right now. On the build up to, uh, to Battleground and they are WrestleMania rematch there. In the corner now we go. Banks looks for the double knees and yeah I was going to try and talk about everything that had just happened. But I guess I don't have much time right now. Flapjack there by Ivory but... I mean, I, what I was going to say was I'm glad I don't have to uh, manage SmackDown because it's becoming more and more of a war zone. And, well, it's certainly got proven right in these last few moments. The Obviously, the uh, Brock Lesnar, CM Punk thing. And what we just saw here, jumping the gun there wholeheartedly. Wyvery and Winter. I don't know what to make of it. It's just so out of the blue and... Every, so much just happening so fast to get things underway. But, of course, the main talking point of this matchup are the two women on the apron right now. I, uh, Becky Lynch and Winter, who are going to face each other this Sunday. A battleground, and it seems as if we're going to get it early. We are. Tag made here on both sides. And Becky Lynch goes face-to-face -face with Winter. She tried to get the belt back off her at SummerSlam and failed. But now Becky Lynch has a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. In this upcoming Sunday, a battleground against this woman right here. The unstoppable, dominant winter. And it really begs the question of, has Becky Lynch been do has Becky Lynch done enough since Mania? Was Becky Lynch kind of slipped off the rails in the midst of winter dominating this women's brand? I don't really... I, I mean, I guess you could kind of say so. She got drafted over at the end of the day for Natalia, a woman on this brand who hadn't done anything... So certainly the uh, Becky Lynch may well have slipped down a little bit, but she's had her moments of greatness at the end of the day. And she proved it kind of last week when she became the number one contender. Great kind of the bank statement to become the number one contender as well. But Becky Lynch knows that's all in the past and she's got to focus on this year tonight. To try and get in her opponent's head and kind of her rival's head really. That's what uh, I imagine winter is to Becky Lynch. And she's got to try and do her best to overcome this tonight and then overcome at a battleground and win that women's title. Great maneuver, uh, great maneuverability there by Becky to get out of the way. And I think this is the first time we've seen Winter since um, all the way back at SummerSlam. 
So she's ca certainly kept herself hidden away while, while everyone else is fighting for the right to be the number one contender to a title. But we're seeing right now Becky Lynch and Winter going at it. And we're seeing if this is the preview to this Sunday, it's going to be far closer than what you may have expected. And Lynch may look to try and take the advantage here. The disarmor on Winter. Winter hasn't been pinned or submitted since she made her return back at the Royal Rumble. And she's looking to keep that streak going here tonight. You think about it, that's eight months it's been since Winter returned. And it's eight months of no pinfalls, no submissions. We, were we talk about Brock Lesnar's streak over on ECW. And Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, I meant, on ECW about how dominant he is. But it was almost nothing compared to Winter's. Tag made, now Banks in. And look at the double team there. Almost wheelbarrowing the champion into the uh, the turnbuckle. Banks now going to go for the cover. Imagine you if she could put away Winter with it. It would certainly put Banks on the uh, on the attention front, I think. Or maybe on the, you know, uh, on the interest of challenger for that title. And look at this year, Winter now doing exactly what Becky Lynch did to her a few moments ago. Very interesting to see that transpiring, but here comes the cover by Winter, only able to secure a one count. Ivory wants back in in this one meanwhile, and the women's champion has decided enough is enough for now. She'll have some time to herself. And she goes after the arm of Sasha Banks. This is all very Becky Lynch maneuvers. Winter just trying to frustrate her challenger. And you can see Becky Lynch, though, she's on the outside. And she doesn't seem to be showing any sign of frustration. She seems to be in the zone right now. And she seems to be focused on her team getting the win here tonight. And, of course, herself getting the win this Sunday. Ivory trying to do some work here on the boss. But finally, the boss is able to fight back in this one. She was taking quite the beating there. At the hands of uh, the hands of Ivory and Winter, big running bulldog there, and you can see on the outside certainly the effect has been left on Winter. She's kind of hanging onto the apron right now, and that may leave Ivory in a bit of a problematic situation here. What are we going to see from these two women? Hurricanrana and a power bomb! What a move there! By the by the uh, duo of Banks and Lynch, gonna hope it doesn't have to put away Ivory, but she kicks at it too. Whatever, well, whatever you want to say, that one was a very well thought out move. And considering this is the first time these two women have teamed up against each other, uh, teamed with each other even I should say, it is incredible to see work like that being done at such an early stage. Once more, Lynch going after the Ivory with that maneuver. A fair play to Ivory. I mean, you know, out, out of coming out of SummerSlam, Ivory proved that she is actually one of the bigger names of the women's division. With picking up wins over the likes of Bailey, um, well, Bailey was her biggest win, I think. I think it all came to a crushing end at the hands of. Uh, I was, I think it was Sasha Banks who brought around the loss for Ivory, although I'm not 100 percent sure. It may well have been Becky Lynch thinking about it, but I have the feeling like it was the boss. Becky Lynch does a good job there to get out of the way of that one. Counters back and forth here by these two women. Lynch, though, finally pulling out the reversal. The, the big question to ask is, is it a good idea for Becky Lynch to be in the ring as long as she is? Will it wear her out ahead of this Sunday? Which is something, of course, she 100% can't afford to do. Great backsploder. Backsplex there. And Sasha will tag herself in, clearly, even though these two women are on the same page. There's still the need to try and one-up each other, I guess, as a result of last week. And that's exactly what the boss is going to try and do here. Bank statement on Ivory. Lynch, though, right into act, going after the women's champion. She, she didn't do a good job at it. And uh, there we go. And oh, there's the tap. Meanwhile, everything just kind of happened in one go. Winter gets sent for the ride. Ivory taps out to the bank statement. Banks and Lynch are your winners, and that's going to put some some focus once more on the boss, but it also shows that Becky Lynch isn't doubting her ability. Lynch is thinking ahead. She is thinking full force about the uh, 
the women's matchup this Sunday and the chance to become women's champion once more. I mean, that was a bit of a, a, a random ending. It just kind of all happened in one go. And, well, there we go. There's victory for Lynch. That'd be, Winter hasn't been pinned in this one, but I would like to think that's her first loss since her return, which is pretty big insane in itself. So, at least there's that going for her. Well, there we go. That is um, something to behold, I guess you could say. And a big win there for Lynch and Banks, and we'll see what it means for these two women going forward. But we're going to move on now. So our next contest is going to be a one-on-one -on -one match between two members of two tag teams. It's going to be Ricochet against Raven. You know, if there's, if there's one thing I'd like more than anything right now, it's to just have a calm match where I can just talk about things without having to think about if there's Brock Lesnar over my shoulder or not, whether or not I have to worry about saying something at the risk of being attacked. Because SmackDown is just becoming a very scary place to be now. But you know what? That's what helps to make SmackDown such a great, I think, such a great brand. You know, it's it's been focused on the wrestling for so long, but I don't know, something's changed as of late. So as if Kyle O'Reilly came in and a true new era of SmackDown came in, because over these last few weeks, it has been insanity around here. And I'm enjoying it. i got to be honest, I'm enjoying this new change of pace from uh, from SmackDown and we're, getting, and we're seeing it here tonight you want to talk about future here of course is future shock Kevin Owens is two acquisitions who he calls the future of SmackDown Ricochet and Kota Ibushi and as I found out very recently these two men this uh, Sunday at Battleground will be fighting to become the new number one contenders already they'll be taking on the former champions The Revival which promises to be an interesting match, I think. But uh, here tonight, Ricochet has got to not focus on the revival. He's got to not focus on the, the threat of Battleground. He's got to focus on the number one contenders themselves, MK Ultra, who get ready to do battle here tonight. And of course, it was a, vi a, a, win? a win last week for Raven in one on one action. I don't remember who we took. Oh, yeah, it was a winner for Raven in one on one action over Nick Jackson, I believe it was. After which, uh, Raven took the opportunity to talk about how they call themselves the Bullet Club. But it's Raven who has the gun in his hand and he's ready to pull the trigger this Sunday and result in new tag team champions. Gotta say something about Raven. He is never, he is never one to try and back himself up against a wall. He is one who always goes out pushing, and Raven's always one who looks on everything with a very confident expression, a very confident eye almost. And I think that's what makes him so interesting. He's, he's not one to admit defeat. He's never one to try and admit when he's in the wrong, almost, and he will do anything to try and prove that he's better than everyone else. And this Sunday, of course, Raven gets the prime opportunity to prove that when he challenges for those tag team titles but right now he's got to do battle with Ricochet who of course is thinking about how big of a pay-per-view um, Battleground's going to be for Future Shock as well has the potential to be the new number one contenders for the tag team titles and a new WWE champion as well it could be a huge night for them but of course tonight they've got to focus on the fact that they know their leader Kevin Owens isn't here and they've got to act in their own accord, really. They've got to try and work on their feet, really, against, the, against Raven. Certainly for Ricochet, anyway. Whether or not Owens will be there to give him any guidance this Sunday maintains to be seen. The match is still scheduled. Whether or not Owens will be too focused on that match is uh, something that we're going to have to wait to find out. Here goes uh, Raven now. Going to hook him for a suplex sheer. Great counter by Ricochet. Small package roll up. Cover on the number one contender. Quickly uh, got out of it, did Raven, but look at that. Ricochet flips it back over as well, and that's a two count. That was a very well back and forth moment there by both men. And now Ricochet looking to unload away with strikes here. Raven can take solace in the fact that if he loses here tonight. Doesn't have to worry about it too much because the Young Bucks will be in action up next and they have got a great stipulation in their hands for both they and match this Sunday. 
and one that really goes against it for Shinsuke Nakamura this Sunday. But here goes Raven right now. Harper proving the distraction, giving him in the advantage, and Raven hits that reverse DDT there. MK Ultra working well together there to try and find success for one another. Let's see what will happen here. Up on the top rope, is Raven going to go? Yes, he is. Raven going to go up high, but Ricochet doing a great job there, turning on to his stomach and rolling away really from it all. Michinoku driver though, Ricochet is being pushed around right now, Raven in the driver's seat of this one, but there's a counter finally for the uh, runner-up in the Cruiserweight Classic this year. And it's safe to say that even though he was the runner-up, he might be having a better run of form than the actual winner of it, Suicide, who we haven't seen for some time. Headlock driver there by uh, Raven. This man is continuing to impress, really, on the uh, on the road to battleground. Certainly, the most the a lot of the attention was about his tag partner on the outside, but Raven's trying to turn it all about him. Misses the elbow drop though, and that could be Ricochet's moment to capitalize. Bringing him in for some kind of DDT, I think it was. Ricochet, not too keen about that one. Counters his way out of it. And now Ricochet has something in mind. Northern Lights suplex. And look at the strength there. A bridge raven over for the Brain Buster as well. If you want to talk about a man who used to do that in the past, look at the longest reigning champion in the history of this universe. But tonight, it all, oh, it almost secured victory for Ricochet. Almost did it there, but he's still got a bit of work to do. Raven still looking to make life difficult for the member of Future Shock. Put him up against the ropes here. What's Raven gonna do? Big forearm shot, and oh, Raven! A little bit of Dean Ambrose within him there. A little bit of a, a lunatic side to him. Well, Raven's always got a bit of a lunatic side to him, but here we go now. Raven in position, ready to strike with an even flow, and again, Ricochet gets his way out of it. Could be a great opening here for this. The 6.30 splash. Take a look at incredible athleticism on display. 6.30 to Raven. Right into the cover. Hooks the leg and with one, two, three. Ricochet with a huge win. Heading into that number one contenders match this Sunday. And this also gives the Young Bucks some breathing room as MK Ultra finally show some troubles on the road to uh, to battleground but what a win that one was there for Ricochet one that he is certainly going to be celebrating whether or not he'll be celebrating it with Kevin Owens maintains to be seen but there is still one bit of their uh, their job left to do and that of course is getting that number one contendership this Sunday away from uh, the revival Maintains to be seen what will happen there, but Ricochet with a very entertaining performance again. Another stand-up performance, but I don't think this damages MK Ultra heading into this Sunday. I think they're still in the driver's seat, and I think they still have a strong chance of winning those titles. You want to talk about those titles, though? You want to talk about the champions themselves? The WWE Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, are in action next, and they're taking on the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship in a two-on-one handicap match. That's right, the Young Bucks. And Shinsuke Nakamura next. Um, well, th this was kind of impromptu. Literally, as I was uh, about to get ready for the next matchup, Jay Lethal heads towards the ring. Lethal, of course, who will face Rusev this Sunday at Battleground. Rusev wasn't isn't here tonight. Jay Lethal, though, is not going to let that get away from him. The self-proclaimed greatest first-generation wrestler in the world has a few things that he wants to say as well. I'm okay with that. Lethal, right off the bat, he said he's going to keep this very short, very sweet, so even un uh, someone like Rusev can understand it. He doesn't know what his problem with Jay Lethal is, but when you pick a fight with Lethal, you are going to pay for it. Lethal's not here, of course, to just be Rusev's whipping boy. A battleground. Rusev's going to find that one out for sure. And as Jay Lethal said... About the about, uh, he's gonna make Rusev realize that. He's gonna make everyone realize that battleground will be a night where Jay Lethal will stand out above the rest and prove that he shouldn't be overlooked by the SmackDown committee. 
He's here for a fight. He'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. And if that even means going face to face with Brock Lesnar again, Jay Lethal has no problem doing it. Pay attention to Battleground. And for everyone, keep your eye on Jay Lethal, especially Rusev. Jay Lethal, as he said, short and sweet to the point. But he looks ready for a head of Battleground. Like I said, when someone like Jay Lethal comes out, keeps it short and to the point, it does still cause you to turn your eye towards him. And I think that is what is going to make Lethal and Rusev a little bit more interesting. We don't know why they're fighting. We don't know what they're fighting for. I think even Jay Lethal said that in his promo. He doesn't know what Rusev's problem is with him. But Lethal isn't going to turn down a fight. Rusev isn't going to turn down a fight. And it's just going to mean we're going to get a really solid matchup between two participants on the SmackDown brand. And that is exactly when you whittle away all the problems, when you whittle away all the things surrounding it, what are you going to get between Nakamura and Omega for the Intercontinental Championship in their rematch from SummerSlam? However, this time, of course, what makes it more interesting, no Bullet Club, no Young Bucks, no Elite, nothing. Omega has to go face-to-face -face with the King of Strong Style and prove that he can defend that Intercontinental Championship, and that is what promises to make it such an entertaining battle. Omega, though, has a bit of an advantage tonight in the fact that he hasn't had to wrestle. Brock Lesnar made sure of that earlier in the night by taking out none other than CM Punk, his opponent. And now, here tonight, Nakamura will go one-on-two against the tag team champions. Nakamura wanted a big challenge. He wanted to prove that he is going to be dominant a battleground and the king of strong style is on the road to reclaim that title and what better way to prove it than to take out Kenny Omega's friends than to take out his elite members to take out his bullet club members as well Matt and Nick Jackson it is going to be a tall order for Shinsuke Nakamura but this is the man who to win that intercontinental championship dethroned the beast to do it so he knows exactly what he's got himself in for here tonight. And I don't think it fears him one bit. But there's the sound of that iconic Bullet Club track and the arrival of the tag team champions. We'll, we'll gloss over what's going on there with the tag titles as we do every week. But Nick Jackson leading. Kind of. He's, he's, uh, he's in front of Matt Jackson as they head towards the ring. The Young Bucks certainly ready. And I think there's a little bit more of a... Um, a little bit more of a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Kind of upbeat... Uh, to, I, I don't know what I don't know exactly. Is, uh, I can't English right now. It's a little bit more upbeat within the Young Bucks anyway. After I think watching Raven lose that match, but like I said, I don't think that match means too much heading into this Sunday. However, the Young Bucks could pick up a big win here, which is kind of what they really need to get heading into Battleground. Of course, Nick Jackson lost last week, but it was in singles matchups, so you can kind of gloss over it. However, Matt Jackson teamed up with Omega and lost to that man right there, Shinsuke Nakamura. And the man we'll see in just a short while, Kyle O'Reilly, in one-on-one -on -one action. But here we go. It's going to be Matt Jackson starting things off against Nakamura. Be interesting to see what Nakamura can do on his own here against these two men. And how much longer this and how long this match will go. Of course, it'll be tag outs for the Young Bucks, but uh, such a thing will not exist for uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and that's where he runs the risk of wearing himself out ahead of this Sunday and making life a little easier for Kenny Omega but I don't think that frightens Nakamura I think he welcomes the challenge here of the Young Bucks he welcomes the threat of this matchup this is a man who of course since arriving to this brand has not been pinned or submitted on a Smackdown show and has only lost twice really since joining the Smackdown brand Matt Jackson going to fly here. What a drop kick he connected with there. Good start for Matt so far. But look at the power of Nakamura there to get himself out. And get himself right back in this matchup. Caught him with that kick in the head. And here comes the King of Strong Style now. Nakamura getting ready to have his way. What a suplex there for Matt Jackson to endure. And this is where it gets a little bit worrying, I think, for the Bucks maybe. They know what they now are away, what they got themselves into. Great work there. Matt Jackson gets himself out of it. Tags in his brother. And oh, Nick Jackson goes for a ride. 
Nakamura is feeling pretty confident as Nick Jackson quickly recovers on the outside. Back in the ring he comes and here we go. What a kick that one was. Nick Jackson though. Pushing it off and gets right back into the swing of things. He's going to go for a package pile driver here. May well have been, but Nakamura didn't like the idea of that one. And here we go now. Nakamura using his hard strikes to his advantage. A huge elbow connecting on the head. And the strikes for Nakamura continue on. Big forearm shot. They nailed him right in the face. That one's going to hurt for some time, I think. But however, it's another great counter by Nick Jackson. He is holding his own here. A little bit, brother, a little bit better than what his brother was at the start. Especially after taking a beatdown. A little bit of a beatdown from Nakamura anyway. Who drills the knee into the back of Nick Jackson. And now what can the King of Strong Style do from this moment onwards? He can look to hit a nice landslide there. On Nick Jackson, you know, wherever Omega is, he's watching on. And he's hoping that his, his, uh, his young bucks can take care of, um, of these two men. Oh, sorry, what well, if his young bucks can take care of Nakamura even? I don't know why I thought of these two men. I blanked out for a second there. But it's not looking that way right now. Nick Jackson in a world of trouble. <coughs> <coughs> Sent into the corner there, sent into the sent into his own corner there was Nick Jackson this time, but he counters it, and the tag made, in, come, in comes his brother now, and looks like we're going to get a bit of a more bang for your buck. And here he comes, there's the 450 by Nick, and there's the moonsault by Matt Jackson. And he goes right into the cover here on Nakamura, looking to try and put him away, and that goes to show how difficult it is. To finish off the King of Strong style. More bang for your buck which has finished some teams in the past. Only secures a one count here. Spear countered. Exactly what uh, Matt Jackson didn't want there. Good counters though. Look at that. Oh, very well countered there. By, Matt, by uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. This is a real back and forth kind of counter fest right now by these two men. Pushes his way out of it. Irish whip now and oh. What a hard knee in the gut there by Nakamura. Showing. No uh, remorse here for the Young Bucks. Exploder suplex and now Omega can start to worry. Because his number one contender is getting ready to put away his Young Bucks ahead of Battleground. Kinshasa! Into the cover goes Nakamura. There's two and all. There was the advantage there. There's the handicap advantage paying dividends. Tag, uh, sorry, not tag, uh, the ability to break up the pinfall like Nick Jackson just did, and he needed that. And they're going to go for another more bang for your buck here, it seems. Is there any tag team move they actually are able to hit the side from this one at this point? More bang for your buck. Seriously, I, I love the Bullet Club and everything, but, you know, of course, SmackDown a little bit more lenient, and I would like to see a bit more tag moves from... Uh, the Young Bucks, so Adam Cole, remind the, uh, remind the Elite to do that. Just saying. Of course, the entire Bullet Club will be watching this one and seeing how the SmackDown section of it is doing. And they are holding their own right now. Well, Matt Jackson certainly is now. Uh, Nick Jackson even is. There's a spear by Nick Jackson. He's able to nail his one. Jumps into the cover. You're going to try and hope for the win. And again, it's still only a one count. Nakamura holding his own in this one. Hard elbow in the head. What will we see here? Could we see an indie taker on its way? We won't because there's a counter by Shinsuke. Double knees in the back. Matt Jackson wants in. Well, he can go for a ride instead. Nakamura sees fit for Matt Jackson to lay on the floor as he hits. A Kinshasa to Nick Jackson. Cover you to put away the box. One, two. Three, Shinsuke Nakamura pulls out the win ahead of Battleground. Nakamura overcomes the odds here tonight against the Young Bucks. 
It was a big win for Nakamura, but it doesn't look as if it's done. The Intercontinental Championship, Omega Shield, but it backfires on him. Nakamura comes out of swinging, and the Intercontinental Champ is sent reeling. Nakamura stands tall here tonight. Is this a sign of things to come at Battleground? Well, here we go. We've been waiting for this all night. We've been waiting for this since we saw this man lay out. Oh, since we saw this man lay out CM Punk earlier in the night, but now we have made it this far. We have made it to the main event. It all kind of started last week, of course, as I stated earlier in the night. Brock Lesnar faced Kevin Owens at the start of SmackDown last week and punished him after the match. F5 in and through the announce table. And even after Brock was done, he, he, uh, he hadn't finished. He hadn't finished leaving his mark on um, opponents. He hadn't finished mark leaving mark on other people on the SmackDown roster because Brock Lesnar took it upon himself then to go after the WWE Champion who tried coming out to the aid of Kevin Owens, trying to turn his attention off Kevin Owens and onto the Champion. He bit a huge bullet just so Kevin Owens could get out of this safely. But Brock Lesnar did not seem too happy about Kyle O'Reilly's intervention. He F5'd him as well and went to beat him up with a steel chain. If not for the intervention of CM Punk, we'd be wondering if Kyle O'Reilly would be making it to battleground along with Kevin Owens. But instead, here tonight, actually, that question can still pose true as Brock Lesnar, who already has had his opportunity to feast once tonight with CM Punk, now gets the chance to do it against the WWE Champion. What is going to be going through Lesnar's mind? More importantly though, what's going to go through O'Reilly's mind as he heads towards the ring? Is this going to be the smart choice for Kyle O'Reilly? Has he kind of bitten off more than he could chew by what he did last week? We'll wait to find out, but O'Reilly certainly in his own usual uh, esteem of confidence. But it seems as if he's not here anymore to make his entrance. He's not here to make anyone smile anymore. He's here now to do business, and that's exactly what he'll do. Kyle O'Reilly putting the boots early on the beast. This is what O'Reilly needs to do. He needs to try and catch the beast off guard. And that's exactly what he's gone for from the start. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going to pay for it. Oh, my God. Brock Lesnar didn't take too kindly to that, though. To that attempt by O'Reilly. A huge belly to belly bringing him back into the ring. And now Brock Lesnar suddenly has control over the champion. But O'Reilly quick to fight back. Still going out of here against uh, Brock Lesnar. This time he gets the Irish whip. What will he look for here against the, the champ? Against the... Uh, against Lesnar, a nice neck breaker there, but Lesnar doesn't fall, and oh, O'Reilly sure fell, clattered by a clothesline there, and the Beast seems awfully pleased about his job at the start. Counter by O'Reilly though, huge uppercut, and now what can the WWE Champion look to do? So O'Reilly, I think this is O'Reilly's biggest test since winning the title at SummerSlam. I mean, I know it's not a title defense, I, I, and I know he's defended the championship once already against uh, Bobby Fish, and that sent him away from SmackDown. But the Brock Lesnar is just something else. Look at the strength of O'Reilly, though. Kind of, he basically deadlifted Lesnar for that uh, belly to belly there. Certainly, no cowardice being shown in O'Reilly, and, and is that really much of a surprise given the nature of this man? He has never backed down from a challenge. And that is why he is where he is here today. That is why he is the WWE Champion. Because he never backed down from a challenge. He was never afraid to say no. And he has gone after everything with a full head of steam. And it's finally paid off for him. But he might be regretting saying no. He might be regretting not saying no to backing down to Lesnar right now. As he eats a hard gut wrench suplex. Kick in the gut as well to follow up. Lesnar now suddenly turning this matchup back into his favor. This is going to be one of those matches that almost the end result won't matter. 
because they will have beaten so much out of one another that you'll just care about how the end result really matters. Uh, so what? Well, I just contradict myself. That you'll care about what happened in the match way more than the end result. Win or lose, these two men aren't going to lose any momentum heading into battleground but it's about what they do in this match that matters if o'reilly can hold himself to the uh, the level of brock lesnar he'll prove that he is a deserving WWE champion and he'll prove that he can hold it with some of the best and some of the most brutal german suplex from the top rope brock lesnar rocks the champion right there and O'Reilly could well be out on his feet as a trip to Suplex City looks on its way for the champion. There's a second and a third devastating suplex. O'Reilly though, he's still up on his feet. O'Reilly didn't, he's still, he's still fighting here. What is this man made of? What a champion this one is. He will go after anyone. The beast stumbles outside, but he doesn't fall. Lesnar doesn't go down, and O'Reilly was hoping for something there. But look at how quickly Brock just threw him back into the ring there. Threw him back into making sure that Brock's the one in control of this matchup. Lesnar now in position, looking to strike with it. F5, countered by O'Reilly. What a reversal by the champion. And now O'Reilly in position, ready to strike, hooks the leg of Lesnar. Back suplex, an exploder suplex more so than anything. With a bridge, Lesnar kicks at it too. But look at how O'Reilly stays on the message, stays on the moment, doesn't let go of Lesnar. Brings him in, chasing the dragon to the beast. He caught him on the money. Brock is busted open, cover on him now, and with one, two, O'Reilly can't win it. Lesnar kicks out at two, and O'Reilly can hardly believe it. He almost had that one won there. The counter the F5 was something extraordinary in its own right. But now the beast all of a sudden is fired back up. Oh no, no, not from again, not from the top rope again. Not another suplex. O'Reilly, not gonna stand for it this time. He counters him, double axe handle, counted in its own right, oh. Back, uh, back breaker there by Lesnar. And now all of a sudden it's slowed down a lot more. The pace is now in the hands of the beast who's having his way here with the champion. Cover now on O'Reilly, gonna try and put him away here. And O'Reilly powers out at two. Still showing that he's got fight left in him. But that's exactly what Brock Lesnar wants to see. Some fight in the champion so he can try and beat it out of him. As the blood continues to trickle down Lesnar's face. O'Reilly continues to fight on. That is uh, something to behold. This is why you've got to respect this man as champion no matter what. He's not afraid of even the beast. Big elbow in the face there by... Uh, uh, I blanked that for a second there by Kyle O'Reilly. Drop kick though and the beast goes down. He's trying to use his speed to his advantage as O'Reilly. And I think that is a very strong asset there. To try and keep Lesnar down. Big elbow drop. O'Reilly jumps into the cover here. Trying to keep him down for the three count maybe. No, Lesnar still powers out. The crowd is on their feet for this one, but O'Reilly is trying to make sure that Lesnar doesn't stay on his for about three, for roughly three seconds. Lesnar though counters his way out of it and a suplex with ease almost. And speaking of suplexes, oh, we're not gonna we we've uh, we're in Suplex City now. And we're gonna make another stop at Powerbomb Plaza. It seems for the second time in two weeks, Lesnar with the triple power bombs to O'Reilly. And oh, he's, he's not ready to finish it yet. Lesnar. Now Lesnar's gonna look for that final blow. He's gonna look for the huge win here for Brock Lesnar to beat the champion here tonight with a single F5. There it is, Brock with the F5. Cover on O'Reilly, one, two, three. Lesnar 
beats the WWE Champion and Brock Lesnar is certainly going to be proud of that one. Brock Lesnar was victorious, but it doesn't look like he's done yet. It doesn't look like the Beast is done celebrating his win for two weeks in a row. Oh, rally faces the right. It's Owens. Kevin Owens has come to the aid of the, of the champion. No, wait, what? Owens with the chair. He just struck O'Reilly. What the hell is going on? What? What did I just see? Kevin Owens with no care. Oh, God. With no care for anyone, anything. I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm stunned. Kevin Owens just flattened the man who came to his aid last week. And he just hit a pop power powerbomb. And Owens isn't done. He's not finished. Package pile driver to O'Reilly. What the hell's going on here? As if O'Reilly hadn't endured enough already at the hands of the beast. I, 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 I have no idea what to say. O'Reilly is pretty much out of it and... Oh, come on. Owens. No, there's no need for this. Owens is almost getting revenge on O'Reilly. It's almost as if he's trying to make him feel the pain that he felt last week when O'Reilly was too late to save him. Whatever it is, Kevin Owens has snapped as a result of last week and he doesn't care about anything anymore. He's had enough, and he's taking it out on the WWE Champion. Not again. Not again, Owens. Package pile driver through the announce table. Kevin Owens has sent his message before Battleground. The prize fighter fights for himself, no one more, and certainly does not fight with any respect for Kyle O'Reilly. Kevin Owens is fighting for a fifth WWE Championship.